Good morning. So today's word comes from 2 Peter 1, 1, and it says, this letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. That's it right there. A slave of Jesus Christ. Understand that there are three types of Christians. The first type are Christians that just want to be Christian. They are trying just to be like Christ as following principles and commands of the Bible, trying to adopt of Christ and applying that to their daily lives. They desire to worship Christ, to to read the Bible. Um, to anyone else on the outside, they would have all of the checks in the box and they're striving to be a good person to represent Christ uh, being an ambassador of his in a way that honors and glorifies Christ. There is a second group of Christians and these groups are followers. So when we look at the difference between someone that wants to just be a Christian and then that step further of being a follower, Job was a Christian, right? When you hear him, he was upright and blameless in all of his ways, right? He did his best. He did his best in repenting for his children and asking forgiveness in areas in which they may sin. Um, he did his best not to sin. The word said he was blameless. So that was someone who is a Christian. Then you have a follower. You have a follower. Someone that's desiring to be in step with the Lord. When I think of follower, I think of actually trying to follow someone if they were driving down the freeway, going to a specific place. You would need to, if you were following them, you would need to know what specific car they were driving. You would need to stay close to them. You would need to keep them in your sights. When they would move, you would need to move and adjust. You would need to pay attention to their movements so you can be um, prepared for maybe what is coming. If they're slowing down, if they're speeding up, when they get off that exit, you're getting off that exit. So you're not making a whole lot of moves on your own. You're turning it over to them and you're staying close to them because you want to get to where they're going. In order to get to where they're going, you have to be able to pay attention to that. When I think about someone that was a follower of Christ, I think of Abraham, right? Abraham was following the Lord. David even better because David was following the Lord. He wanted to know what God wanted him to do. So he would stop. He would take a minute. He would say, God, what do you want in this moment, right? He desired to be in step with the Lord. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that goes a step further than just Christian. We see him seeking. We see him following. We see him wanting to be in step with the Lord. Oh, but then there's a third. There's a third one, and that is a slave. Paul was a slave. Paul was a slave. Peter was a slave. But when we think about Paul, he couldn't just do what he wanted to do. He was at the mercy of Christ and what he desired. 
So his life was no longer his own. It was given over to Christ to do as Christ desired. Go here, do this. He didn't live a life in which it was. It's Paul's life. And every once in a while, I check in with the Lord. No, no. This is a life that is surrendered. It's surrendered to the Lord. Whatever the Lord says, will do. You hear this in the New Testament, right? It's why do you say what you'll do next year? We'll go here, we'll go there. Your life is nothing but a fog. It's nothing but a mist. It's nothing but a, but a vapor. What you should say is if the Lord, <laughs> right? Because there's this understanding that our life is not our own. So for us, those that are slaves to Christ, we get up every morning and we're like, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want to do with your life today? That life is surrendered to the Lord where moment by moment, is this what you want me to do? What do you want me to say in this moment to this individual? Is this the individual you want me to interact with right now? Well, we're constantly seeking to be in the perfect will of God because when you think of a master-slave relationship, the slave doesn't have autonomy. It doesn't have will. It can't just be like, uh, today I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm going to check in with the master. No, it's completely submitted and surrendered to whatever the master wants. And when it goes out, it is definitely a representative, an ambassador, a representative of that master to where if they get out of line, that falls back on the master and they have to deal with the master because of that. So there will be some discipline. But those who the father chastens, those who he disciplines are those he loves, right? Like a good father. So we got to understand, sometimes we are desiring to follow Christ and we're talking to someone who's just a Christian, which if that's what the Lord has for them at that stage in their life, then so be it. But they will never understand you with this urge, with this desire to follow. Oh, if you're a slave to Christ and you're just talking to someone who's following, they're going to be like, well, you should ask the Lord, but they don't understand. It's more than just the asking. This is a, I am completely surrendered and open 24 seven to the Lord. I am his. <laughs> My life is his life. So those relationships with the Lord will look vastly different. It will. So I ask you today, what type of Christian are you? Because you got to know what lane you're in because this drives your entire life. You could be having struggle and angst and difficulty because the Lord is leading you to be a slave. He has things he wants to do with you. He's pulling you into being a prisoner of Christ and you're trying to just, hey, I just want to read my Bible. <laughs> I just want to be a good Christian. Like, I just want to try to be a good person. And you're struggling because you don't understand where this rub, where this angst, because God is requiring more. He's calling you to deeper levels in him, to higher levels in him. Oh, if you're just a follower, and I don't want to say just, but if you are a follower, and you're like, what is going on? I'm already giving the Lord like an hour of my morning. I've already, you know, talked to him throughout the day. I try to pray without ceasing. 
Like what's going on? And I feel like he still wants more. How could he want more? He wants all from you. Maybe he's trying to get you to cross over into servanthood, into becoming a slave of Christ. You're trying to give him a piece of your life. You're trying to give him pieces of your life. And he wants that whole life surrendered to him. I tell you what, as a slave of Christ, thank goodness he called me to this level because I want to see what all God has for me. I want to see what it's all about. God, why did you create me? God, I don't messed up my life. I'm 42. I don't messed up my life for four decades. <laughs> I don't have some fun, but I don't have some struggle and trouble. God, make it your masterpiece. Do what you will. Invite me in a new life. Oh, I bore of this natural life. Take me into the supernatural. God, let me work with you. Let me partner with you. Don't let me stay just working a nine to five and doing all the checks in the box like everyone else. That road has already been traveled. Ain't no more places I need to travel to. There's no more vacationing I need to do. I mean, they've all, I've seen it. <laughs> I've done it. I mean, how much more physical fitness can you get? How much more education can you get when you get to a certain point and you get the checks in the box? What else are you going to do? Just more of it? No, God, I want you. So yes, I'll gladly be a slave to Christ. So even though it sounds like, why would I want to? Oh, I want to. Oh, I want to. Let me see what the Lord can do. And oftentimes the Lord wants to do so much with you that that's what he requires of you in order for you to have success. So what type of Christian are you now? And what type of Christian do you desire to be? And pray into that. That's for today. All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this word. I thank you for anybody who is stopping by to simply view it just so they can think about where they're at in their lives. God, I ask that you highlight to them where they're at, but not only where they're at, but where, if not, you want them ultimately to go. What's the next step for them? Help them to understand where you're pulling them to. We don't want people to try to be slaves who you're just saying at this moment, I need you to focus on just imitating me on routines, on being a good person. That's your first step. So help people see where they are and where you're requiring them to be at this moment. Lord, I thank you for today. Lord, I ask that you build up a hunger and a thirst in these people that'll be watching Lord, to be able to move in the direction that you would have them go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.